Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to the From the Depths Energy Weapons Tutorial Part 1 of several. Now originally all energy weapons, which by the way in the build menu From the Depths is everything that gets lumped into this screen here, I was originally going to cover it all in one video and then uh, roughly around the second page of notes I was scribbling for it, I realized, hang on, Borderwise, this is too big. So now it's being broken up. And to start off with, as you might have guessed from the title of this video, the first thing we're covering is, oh, hi Seagull, is offensive lasers. These are the weaponized form of the laser system that you will stick on your craft and they offend at other enemy craft. They hurt their feelings and they actually hurt them. So, over there we have our target, the Marauder, as per usual. Uh, does sterling work being shot at and over here we have a very basic laser system and I just remembered Something to add here I make notes while I record very pro of me. So anyway, what are we looking at here? So for those of you who have no idea what lasers are in from the depths and don't really know anything about them uh, The way they're built goes something like this you start off with the multi-purpose laser. This is the start of the whole thing This is a little bit like it's like uh, when building a fuel engine, it's like the generator. It's where the whole thing starts out. The whole system will not work if it does not have this. It doesn't matter what you're using the laser for. From the multipurpose with laser, you then have, and let's just show you this, the laser coupler. This is what connects uh, the multipurpose laser to cavity. So multipurpose laser, coupler, cavity right here. So it basically couples laser systems together. And that's how you know that. Uh, to go on the coupler are Q switches, and Q switches are placeable on the laser coupler, and it basically changes how the laser fires. So, uh, with no Q switches, it's a continuous laser, it just goes bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
and because I've never really been good at it. So, moving on, still in the cavity section, then you have storage cavities. And what this is, is a 3x3 three three, uh, storage lump that you cannot attach pumps to, but it stores a lot of energy. So, the regular cavity stores 150 energy, and this stores 6,000 energy. So, these are very important, like, pretty much uh, depending on what kind of laser system you're building, it can be more or less built around what you're doing with storage uh, cavities, because this, uh, my math is terrible, 6,000 divided by 150, this is like, like, replaces easily uh, 10 regular cavities in terms of how much it stores. It's very space efficient. And in an update that I think is due to arrive any month now, uh, these things are going to be made twice, uh, going to be twice as expensive but have twice as much storage, so they're going to be even better for that. So storage cavity is very important, like, uh, mostly for uh, laser anti-munition defense, but it's very useful for uh, building up the power of a defensive laser as well. And then you get to these things, and this is the frequency doubler. So, what this does, it has only one job, but it's a very uh, important uh, job, is that it adds armor penetrating power to the laser. Now, if you do not have these things, so I'll get rid of all of them, uh, your laser will start uh, have with just one AP, and that is useless because, uh, to give you an, an idea of it, uh, and AI components have one AP, which means that this laser will do only half damage to some of the weakest blocks in the game if you do not have any armor penetrating value on it. So you really do, frequency doublers are kind of non-negotiable for offensive lasers or even for lambs because you need at least uh, two AP in order to do full damage to projectiles because all projectiles, as of right now, have one armor. And so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think that's eleven. Uh, well, it actually, it actually says in the UI, duh, order wise, pay attention. Uh, 11 frequency doublers, which brings us to about 30.6 AP, which is a good AP to start with, because 30 AP is twice the armor class of metal, so metal has 15 AP, which means that this laser uh, will do full damage to metal blocks, which is very handy, because metal is quite common. And there's two other blocks to consider in here. The single input cavity, which is like a regular cavity. Uh, let's just put this on here, show you what I mean. Which is like a regular cavity, except it can it uh, stores a little bit more. So it stores about four times as much, and it on but you can only attach one pump to it. So the single input cavity is kind of uh, the love child between the regular cavity and the storage cavity, and then the uh, destabilizer is a weird block. So this increases the amount of energy the laser uses per shot and they'll do the same damage in a smaller window of time until energy is emptied and DPS is limited to pumping rate. So what this does is that you'll see here in the UI it says cavity energy percentage use per shot is 2.5% and uh, this particular laser system, let's get rid of that, uh, can keep up with that quite nicely. Adding a frequency doubler uh, not a frequency doubler, sorry, a destabilizer, increases that to 4.5%. So it is an, I guess, an artificial way of making each shot more powerful because it's just using more energy. It's got the same DPS, but it uses up its energy faster. Well, no, it's more DPS at the cost of like running out of storage a lot more quickly. So destabilizers kind of have very selective use, and we're going to talk about them more a little bit later. So that's basically how to set up a laser system, and uh, you do want to make sure uh, your cavities are pointed the right way. Uh, the coupler can attach to, like, the multipurpose laser, and uh, other couplers and the cavities in any direction, but the cavities need to have that cone shape pointed at the coupler. If you swap them round, it does not work. So that is the basics of how to build a laser. And let's talk about lasers themselves for a second. So why are they a good thing? Well, no, I mean, I have, well, sorry, haven't finished talking about the blocks. They're a good thing because they're lasers. That's the short answer. So here we have connectors, which are a little bit like uh, the connectors you have in cram cannons and advanced cannons. And they connect laser bits to other laser bits. So they connect multipurpose lasers to couplers. They connect it to uh, transmitters, transceivers rather. 
which are fairly handy because they allow the laser to be beamed uh, across a large distance of your craft because Basically, if a thing is more than 10 meters away, you might as well use a transceiver because this is worth 10 blocks. The, no, sorry, the connector is worth 10 blocks, the transceiver is worth 100. So if it's more than 10 blocks away, it's transceiver time. And also these things beam straight through blocks, which is very convenient. And they also attach in all kinds of funny ways. You don't need to actually attach them to connectors in order for them to receive uh, a laser. And you can beam them onto turrets. So here's another one, and it beaming, it's beaming up straight through the bottom of this turret. It's only through the bottom of turrets that uh, you can actually that you can uh, channel lasers. You can't do it from the sides. You can't do it from anywhere else. And it needs to be uh, right on top of this turret here. It receives another connector, and it goes to the laser combiner, which is a quite an important block. This is the laser equivalent to the firing piece of a cram cannon or advanced cannon and it's where actually the laser gets shot out of so there's a number of options around here and laser settings you can set it to hold fire for low energy uh, percentage so i can set this to only fire uh, when the uh, laser system is at 100 or at 50 or at any number really but we're going to set it to that because it can keep up just fine and yeah, up top we have the laser colorer, which is how you change the color of your laser. I currently have it set to a lovely uh, hot purple. Darn it. And over here we have the optics. So, the optics, there's two kinds. Firstly, you have regular optics, and they focus the beam, decreasing damage lost uh, with distance, and they also reduce attenuation. So, if we look at the UI here, you see firing arc, inaccuracy, attenuation, damage at various ranges, uh, the attenuation in water and the damage at two distances in water as well. So, what this means is is that there's a fixed inaccuracy of uh, 0 0.05 degrees. Lasers are very, very accurate uh, at range, no matter what. But attenuation uh, is a different thing. So, this uh, laser attenuates quite horribly, actually. It uh, attenuates 1.53% for every 100 meters of distance. Which is why lasers can miss, because it just has a natural scatter to it. And you get rid of that by adding uh, more optics. So currently 1.53, now it's at 1.42. Uh, and you'll notice as well that uh, the damage of very ranges increases the more optics we have. So damage at uh, 500 meters at 92.59%. Laser damage decreases with distance quite rapidly. So. Uh, it's a little bit hard to make a laser that is just uh, supremely powerful at long range. Uh, they're better at range than pretty much any other weapon type, but even they, they uh, lose effectiveness with distance. Which is realistic, by the way, like uh, real-life microwave lasers, uh, the light does tend to scatter uh, over distance. But, you can reduce that with more optics, so uh, watching the damage at 500 meters, 92.59, 93.1. Yeah, there's diminishing returns for this, by the way, and uh, you get with, you tend to get ridiculous noodle barrels uh, if you pile on the uh, optics too much. Also, you'll notice that the firing arc has gone down. So, over here we have laser steering optics, and all this does is that increases the field of fire of the laser, which isn't that much of a problem or a concern uh, for this laser that is on a two-axis turret, so it can aim wherever it likes. But uh, on a fixed laser, if it's fixed at directly to the hull, uh, having uh, steering optics is a very good idea. And lots of them as well. I forget what the maximum is, but it is, uh, it is quite finite. So if we do uh, this, for instance, uh, actually it's quite strong. So this particular laser now has a firing arc of uh, 42.86, which is pretty decent. But you'll notice that uh, the damage at various ranges has plummeted. This thing is almost useless at 4,000 meters. That was my phone. Uh, probably should look at that, but I'll do that later. And what was I saying? Oh yeah, so fixed hull lasers that require a lot of laser steering optics are pretty much limited to short range, just out of necessity, because uh, the more uh, firing, well not firing, what's it? The more optics you stick on this, Hello. What the? Control V. Control V. No. Okay. The more optics you stick on this thing, 
uh, the smaller the firing arc is. In fact, it uh, drops down to a very, very small firing arc. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, what was it? What else was I going to talk about? Okay, so now we can talk about... Uh, nope, we can't. Sorry, we can't do that yet. I'm just going to quickly prefab this. Because I don't feel like uh, building all that again. Let's quickly talk about what the regular laser combiner is good for. So, you'll notice uh, it was frying that marauder quite nicely, but what lasers really excel at, and they do this better uh, than any other form of weapon system, so we have your cram cannons, you have your advanced cannons, you have your missiles, and you have your particle cannons, which will be in another video, don't you worry. Uh, more than any other form of weapon, lasers are good at swatting uh, small, fast, erratic targets, so... If we spawn in a whole mob of really annoying uh, stuff, so where is it? Let's have a whole bunch of hakes. So hakes are really annoying. They are erratic flyers, and they're small and they're fast. And even things like advanced cannons and particle cannons tend to struggle to hit them a little bit. Uh, like it even says in the description, it's like small airframe. Alongside vector thrust engines, the drag reducing airframe enables the Hake to achieve exceptional turns, make it harder to hit with conventional cannon rounds. These things are a bastard to hit, so that's where lasers are helpful. And I just spawned in way too many of them. And lasers don't care about how erratically you move, uh, they just disintegrate you. See, after that turn in particular, a lot of missiles and cannons would be, uh, well, shouldn't have spawned in so many, they're colliding with each other now. But yeah, lasers are really darn good at dealing with stuff that flies like this. Simply because you can't dodge it, or at least it's very hard to dodge it. And it's often not really worth it, because, like... Yeah, you can't really dodge a laser, it's just the laser sometimes just misses on its own. Let's just look at this a bit longer. I do kind of like my purple laser, it's really good. So this is what lasers are primarily good at. Uh, they used to be, well, good at a lot of things really, but uh, for the most part, this is what they really excel at, is just swatting things that are fast, swatting things that are small, and... Yeah, they're also decent against armor because lasers ignore armor stacking. You'll remember I mentioned earlier that uh, you only need uh, 30 AP in order to do full damage to metal blocks with lasers. Uh, that is because they ignore armor stacking. It doesn't matter how many layers of metal you're shooting at. Uh, only 15 armor will count for the laser shooting at it. So that's very helpful and it means that dealing with really thickly armored craft, uh, lasers can be a very good idea. Now, on that note, uh, there's like kind of uh, multiple things you can do with a regular laser system, so let's talk about that for a second. So, 4Q, generally the best idea, but uh, there is a place uh, for other uh, variants as well. So, let's delete this. Let's uh, have. Let's have you as just a little rangefinder thingy. So, shuriken over there, laser demo number two. So this right here... Listening. ...is a Zero-Q laser. Now, it's uh, mostly the same. In fact, it's almost exactly the same setup. The only difference is it has uh, less frequency doublers. It has eight of them instead of eleven. Uh, but it still has... Well, actually, more AP. So, this is where uh, zero-Q uh, lasers come in handy, because if there are no Q switches on the laser coupler, it automatically has a higher armor penetration. So, this is where uh, zero-Q lasers are actually quite handy, because despite the fact they scatter all over the place, uh, they, are, they essentially get a boost against uh, uh, dealing with things that are armored, and it means they're very slightly cheaper. So, the exact cost, if you look at this, the Q-switch is uh, actually reasonably expensive. It is uh, having four Q-switches is automatically 200 extra materials, and frequency doublers 
are really expensive. It is 250 materials each. So if you want to uh, have a real armor melting laser, and particularly if you want multiple lines of uh, uh, laser components uh, starting, which have laser couplers in them, a zero Q is actually a fair bit cheaper. Like it really scales up if you scale up the size of the laser. And personally, I just like zero Q lasers. I just, I just like, well, this. Bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
They're really good at shooting anything that is up in the air, though. Also, since they fire in straight lines, uh, they're not uh, great at uh, hitting craft at uh, funny angles, so... Like, it's kind of going shooting straight at the thickest parts of the ship. But considering the damage it's doing, that's not really an issue. So, that little demo out of the way. On to the next thing, which is sniping lasers. Let's go and spawn in a Telemachus, because Telemachuses are hilarious. Let's go here and laser demo three. Now, I've talked about... 0Q lasers and 4Q lasers and anything between 1 to 3 uh, Qs on the Q-switch I consider a sniping laser, inverted commas because it's because th uh, lasers can penetrate uh, through blocks if a uh, laser pulse hits a block and uh, it damages and exhausted by the HP of the block it'll continue and hit the block behind it and you can take advantage of that by having uh, Armor penetrating lasers that whistle uh, straight through multiple blocks and hopefully deal critical damage. Which sounds awesome in theory, but in practice it's actually kind of hard to do. So what we have here is a sniping setup. So you'll notice quite a long uh, optics barrel. And the reason for that is you want the attenuation to be as low as possible because ye gods, when these things miss, it is cringeworthy. Because you don't want them to miss ever. Uh, you have the combiner, remember this setting? It holds fire below 100% energy, so uh, that's making sure it does maximum damage per shot. And over here, we've only got one Q-switch. It does a lot of damage per shot, and the reason is, uh, remember I was talking about uh, laser destabilizers? It has a lot of them. So it uses 91.4% of the entire energy of the cavity, and has a bunch of storage cavities as well per shot. So, that means it uses about 40,000 uh, cavity energy per shot, and it does pretty much exactly that amount of damage. So, it's uh, 40,000 seems like a lot, but uh, it also, it's a 50 AP, is also pretty good, and more than you need actually if you're shooting at metal. If you're shooting at heavy armor, you want it to be about 80. And also on that note, there's not usually a whole lot of point for a laser system to have an AP value above 80 because the most heavily armored block in the game, pretty much, is heavy armor and armor of 40. So twice that is 80, you don't usually need more than that. The exception to that is applique panels, which have an armor of 65, but they have so little health that uh, even a low AP laser will uh, destroy them pretty quickly. Uh, you want to have some AP though. So 130 is actually is an AP value that you can go for if you have the money for it. And also, pretty much every form of anti-laser system, so going down here, laser warner, smoke dispensers. These things are the main form of laser defense, and what they do is... Uh, well, let's just read it out. So smoke dispensers used to reduce the damage received by weaponized lasers through the deployment of smoke. And smoke will be automatically de deployed when this block is destroyed. It can also be triggered through the use of laser warning blocks connected to the same mainframe. Smoke lasts 80 seconds and is ready to redeploy after 40 seconds. So, what is not mentioned here is what smoke actually does. It doesn't reduce the damage of lasers anymore, it reduces the AP value. So, this is where having a bit of excess AP comes in handy, because each smoke cloud... Uh, well, it's actually best to show you with advanced cannons for this. So, right here, what we have is an advanced cannon with smoke. So, smoke in advanced cannons, by the way, is mostly uh, an offense, kind of offensive defense these days. And so, we get this up to 200. You'll notice there uh, the density of the smoke cloud, what that means. Smoke cloud, 192. At a 200 millimeter shell, uh, laser AP is reduced by almost 50%, or reduced to 51.99%. I believe that, uh, I forget what exactly the density of the smoke cloud with the smoke, uh... What, what did they call again? I just brain farted on that. Smoke dispensers, I was about to say projector. I forget what the density of that is, but I think it's equivalent to a 300mm shell, which uh, reduces laser AP to 40%. And this stacks, by the way, uh, multiple smoke clouds 
uh, each reduce the uh, AP of an incoming laser by that much. So, smoke does a pretty darn good job in reducing the AP of lasers and is a reason for have putting the AP higher rather than lower, uh, assuming you can afford uh, 250 materials of pop for laser frequency doublets. So, back to the sniping laser. Gods, I'm all over the place today. Uh, this is single shot, all that kind of stuff. So, zap. Multiple blocks uh, falling off. And uh, in this particular case, against a more compact craft, this can be quite scary because it whistles through, uh, blows up certain things. And you can see multiple blocks knocked off just with a singular shot. Uh, in practice, like, I think you kind of need to build them a bit more efficiently or a bit bigger than what I usually do here. And you'll notice uh, the uh, firing rate isn't g great for this particular one. So, that's basically it for the laser combiners. It's basically the 4Q, the 0Q, and in between, which is this kind of slow snipey thing. Which is the thing that kind of works. And you see, like, this Telemachus is not having a good day because we've ruined its buoyancy. And zap. Zap. Zap apples. Yay! And it is hilarious, by the way, to have this kind of thing uh, fire against something volatile. So, what is volatile? Volatile and fragile. Krakens are volatile and fragile. So, if we have this thing and we aim for the right spot, this happens. Uh, that laser just to whistle through one turret and exploded another, which is hilarious and cool. But unfortunately, you'll need a pretty darn big laser in order to make that work against a heavily armored target. So now we've... Uh, did it do it again? Come on, once, once more. Once more. Also, I hate that you can't see the laser uh, below the waterline. Zap. 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 Zap! What did we explode there? Must have been something important. Anywho. So that's your three categories of offensive laser, except there is one more. There is a different version to everything I just mentioned. So, let's spawn in something... Plunder right here, testing dummy. Don't move. Do not move. I forbid you to move, plunderer. So going back to our first laser, our lovely, reliable uh, 4Q laser, there is an alternative form of laser combiner, and that right here is the short-range laser combiner, which is twice as expensive, but doesn't require any optics, and right here, it also has the color set on the laser combiner itself, and it looks like it was uh, straight up ripped off from a Warhammer 40k vehicle. So, what are we looking at here? So, let's look at the description again. So, what this is, is a short range version of the regular combiner. Focuses the laser at shorter range than the standard laser combined. Didn't combined. Nick. Typo. It's extremely powerful up close, and the shorter the focus distance you set, the more powerful it becomes. So, it's basically... The melee version, or the shotgun version, really. So, do, do, do. Wow, we can just do that, can we? That's weird. This is quite a recent block, by the way. And so, at the very least, what you have here is the focus distance, hold fire below energy, blah, blah, blah. And in this case, uh, the focus distance is uh, 200 meters. And so it does three times as much damage uh, as a regular laser combiner. The AP multiplier, however, is, uh, it takes an AP penalty. So you see here, the AP of the, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? This is 19 uh, AP, as opposed to uh, the 30 AP we had before, but that changes a little bit. So you see there, the AP has gone up a little bit uh, with the damage multiplier. The max focus distance is uh, 300, so for anything that you want uh, firing at about, I don't know, 500 meters. Uh, this is where you'd want the simple laser, by the way, which is separate from uh, this whole laser system because it's in the simple weapons tab, and it doesn't use power, it uses ammo. So, 
Generally speaking, uh, why would you want one of these? Because, well, they do a lot of damage uh, very quickly. So, here, get rid of that, and we want something that flies uh, very close, which unfortunately rules out a lot of planes. So, let's go here, have the Atlas, and let's uh, wait for the Atlas to get to us. The Atlas is scary at hell, as hell these days, and I don't much care for it. It has flak, even. Good luck just trolling this thing with planes. Look at you wiggling along. Oh boy. It does, however, fly straight over the top of things, which means it is... Why did I do that? Which makes it very convenient for us to show off uh, this uh, laser right here. So, this does a thousand damage a shot at 22 AP, which means... Well, it's not quite twice as powerful, because AP values as well. And uh, there's also a true melee form of laser, which I'm probably not going to show off in too de much detail in this video for reasons I shall explain further. Wait for... Oh yeah, this, uh, this is an annoying bug. These things currently don't work with failsafes, but you can see here, it is really mulching this atlas. Yeah, I don't know why these things currently don't work with failsafes, but it's very annoying. It is pretty good, though. Jeez, look at that. That is... Melty, 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 melty. You can imagine having a broadside setup of just... This kind of thing. I should make a craft which uses one of these, actually. Like, this is quite a modest laser system, and just look at the damage it's dealing. Oh, I should mention, actually, that the ver that the reason why this thing was originally introduced, uh, well, introduced, uh, put into the game, is for laser bombers. So the idea is, you have the short-range laser attached on a two-axis turret underneath a bomber uh, that just uh, flies over a target, exhausts uh, all its laser energy, and does a huge amount of damage very quickly. And, yeah. That's basically the idea of it, although it is a pretty decent for very short-range anti-air. Because, just look at that, it is just melting faces right now. Spectacular block confetti. Let's actually change the size of... Uh, also, this thing, uh, the laser originates... Uh, oh no, they fixed it. Great. Let's do that hot purple thing again. Yeah, look at that! Laser looks a little bit weird, but... Uh, Okay, that'll do, Pig. That'll do. Let's have a bunch of Shrikes, actually, because that was so much fun to watch. Do -do 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 -do. So yeah, I should probably talk about the true melee laser thing, which is, uh, this. Energy weapons. Do -do 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 -do. Where's it? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where's it go? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Did it get removed? I think it might have gotten removed. There used to be a laser melee block. And let, no, here it is. Durr. Durr, durr, durr. Talk about that in a second, the laser cutter. In the meantime... Like, at this point, I'm not explaining anything. I just want to see Shrikes die. And... Now! Did the Shrike get updated? No, it didn't. Well, it's about to be updated with, uh, destruction. Laser are also really good for things that, uh, planes that get destabilized and then they kind of just fly in a big circle. Very convenient. Also, at this distance, there's, like, virtually no attenuation at all. Did that thing? Nope. Yay! Lasers are fun. Lasers are so much fun. Yes, disintegrate. Disintegrate. Did I just say lasers are fun? What's wrong with me? Who am I? What did I do with Borderwise? Okay, so now on to the uh, rather cop-out explanation of laser cutters. So, over here, we have conceivers, 
Like so, like so, like so, like so, like so. So, laser cutters are essentially like a lightsaber. So, two laser cutters placed facing each other will create a continuous wave laser beam that deals significant damage to anything that gets in the way. So, what this is... Like that, like that. Okay, so... That little laser right there is a problem, and... We can demonstrate that by turning off the AI repair tentacles and doing this. Also turning off God mode. Hello? Is that working? Nope, that's not working. Hmm. Turn this off. Nope. Okay. Basically, I don't know what to do with these things. Uh, laser cutters are going to require a video all unto themselves for multiple reasons. Firstly, because uh, I have actually yet to see anyone uh, make anything remotely useful with these guys. Simply because, like, Look at this. This is an expensive component. It's uh, 70 materials. It's not got great armor or health. Health of 500, armor 10, that's nothing. And you want to put it close to a enemy. At like physics damage range. So, as of yet, I don't know how to use these things. Uh, but, hypothetically, what you can do is have some kind of way of pulling enemies uh, into a gap uh, which this laser kind of garrot is sitting in. So you have harpoon missiles uh, over here. They pull that way and pull them into this gap. But as of right now, I would not recommend using these things simply because, I don't know, it's cool, but it's inefficient simply because uh, if you put uh, these things, if you put rams, on a spin block, uh, you get much better results without having to use a big expensive system that uses power. So, laser cutters aren't great. I would not recommend them at this point. Uh, the other lasers in uh, this video, they work damn well and they have uh, a specific niche in the From the Depths meta right now. So, on that note, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Have I? Oh, I think I have. Oh, that's good to hear. Because my throat actually hurts. So, uh, that's about it. Nope. Turn that thing off. Okay, so, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in the From the Depths Energy Weapons Tutorials. Next time, we'll be covering... Uh, laser anti-munition defense, also known as LAMS. Bye! Farewell!